Earlier this week, we began our discussion on the Sylvan F, the living trees, the manifestation of life in the realms, and the children of Alariel. Today, we will explore some of the most iconic Sylvan F units, the Noble Spirits. These are the Tree Lord, the Tree Lord Ancients, the Branch Witches, and the Tree Revenants. Starting off with the Tree Lords and Ancients, these are the commanders, leaders, and guides of the various glades, groves, war groves, however you want to describe them. It's the top of the pyramid. But they also have another important role, and that is the lore keepers. They pass down wisdom and knowledge that they've accrued throughout the ages, which is convenient because they've lived incredibly long lives. And as such, they are an integral part of the Sylvaneth society. And the tree lords and ancients are both suffused entirely with life magic, so much so that there's actually little sprites and creatures of Giran crawling all amongst them. They're important because they can hear the spirit song better than any others. That song we were talking about on Monday's video that goes all across the realms and kind of almost acts as a communication network for the Sylvaneth, but it's, it's just the sound of life happening. They can hear it better than anyone else. In addition to that, they can also add to it. They can project their own songs so that if they are in danger, other Sylvaneth can be alerted nearby and come and assist them. It's important to note here that they cannot sing between realms. Only Alariel can do that, which she promptly does as soon as she's kind of reborn. But your average tree lord or ancient cannot. But even on top of those roles, these are the leaders of war and government. They share wisdom and experience, which is vitally important for the survival of the species. Because wisdom and longevity, being old, are two of the most highly regarded aspects of any Sylvaneth. They all bow down to someone older than them because they have a sheer respect for their elders. Wisdom is a valued commodity, which actually sets them kind of unique amongst other races, where they might focus on warrior prowess, strength, subterfuge, quick kills, things like that. I'm just picking out various races in my mind. There are very few that truly honor wisdom. And when that wisdom kind of plays out, we'll talk about this more towards the end of this video, but how that has played out is these uh, Tree Lords and Tree Lord Agents have led the Sylvaneth into surviving the Age of Chaos and just doing so using guerrilla warfare tactics, hiding themselves, being very intelligent, wise, and smart about how they show themselves and manifest throughout the realms. Now the Battle Tome really kind of lumps the two together, Tree Lords and Tree Lord Ancients, and then towards the end, uh, it just kind of separates Ancients out on their own. Ancients are the rulers of entire enclaves rather than just a household, like an, like an organizational structure. These would be like the highest elders of any Sylvaneth group. It is the uppermost rank of leadership, and they are old beyond measure. In fact, they see Tree Lords, the most numerous of this rank of like the Tree Lord type unit, as young and impetuous, even though the Tree Lords have lived several lifetimes of their own. They're hundreds of years old, but they're still, by comparison, very young. And functionally, what separates the two is that Tree Lord Ancients have mastered the use of magic. They're dedicated to bringing the power of Guran, the power of life itself, to the battlefield. And together, they personify aspects of their glades, of the forests that they come from. If your Tree Lords and Tree Lord Ancients are very generous and gracious, so is everyone beneath them. If they're aggressive or reclusive and uncompromising, so are their kin. And that bit of actual lore about how they really do set the tone for everyone beneath them is a great way to really customize what your army's theme is going to be like. You really just have to design the main character and everything else naturally flows through and I love that. And so now we're going to explore Tree Revenants, one of the newer units that came out with the Battle Tome. And to do so, we need to kind of talk very briefly about army makeup. Usually I do a dedicated video, but I just didn't see the need to do it with this one. But the basic military structure of the Sylvaneth is called a household. You get a tree lord, a branch witch, and several units of tree revenants. And this structure, the household itself, they can be assigned to a wide variety of tasks. They can patrol the wilderness, garrison important religious sites, or lead assaults on the enemy. Each household is very unique, and even if they come from the same place, the same war grove, the same forest, they can still have very unique traditions and ceremonies, rites, and prayers. And it's important to start talking about households because that is where the bulk of tree revenants are. They fill up the vast ranks of those because several units of them make up the main fighting force of the Sylvaneth. Dryads are the most numerous species, right? The most numerous troop type, but they have a very different role and we'll explore that later. Tree revenants 
are your basic warrior, the ones who are bred and made for war. And looking at them brings out a very somber feeling amongst the Sylvaneth. It's said that their appearance is a harsh reminder of the old world, of ancient protectors long ago. Their appearance, fighting style, and temperament all act as reminders of those souls lost eons ago. And if you haven't caught on from that description, these are the old world wood elves. Now it's not necessarily the specific exact wood elves, like their souls just got straight reincarnated, but Alario formed them this way as a reminder of the old world to honor them. Of course, you could in your own lore say that it is the exact souls, but there's nothing necessarily tying it to that. It's just a lot of echoes of the past. So we have our household, we've filled it with troops of the tree revenants, and we're led by a tree lord who is the branch witch. Well, they have three main roles. They are the spiritual leaders, army leaders, like generals, lieutenants kind of thing, and they also guard the soul pods. They are like druidic figures infused with life magic and able to discipline themselves to use it. And they also have an interesting role where they reclaim aspects from fallen tree lords and tree lord ancients as higher beings uh, so they can be replanted and regrown back in the gardens. We touched on soul pods before how it's sort of like the core of what a sylvaneth is and they're grown in little gardens and that's how they produce their troops. Well reclaiming fallen warriors is a great way to keep yourself going as a species. They're highly respected among sylvaneth for their wisdom and leadership but they also have a bit of a temper. They are very easily and renownedly roused to wrath, right? They get some bad news, they have just a very impetuous response, very aggressive approaches to things, and there's only really only one creature who can get away with everything in their eyes, and that is Spites. Now, the Battletone really describes Spites as just any kind of lesser creature that wants to be around the Sylvaneth. It goes into a little more explanation than that, but in this case, if you're looking at the model, it's the slug going through her body. That is called a bitter grub. It is a caterpillar-like slug that wraps around the branch witch and attacks anything that she's attacking or is attacking her, right? She can get super annoyed and frustrated with other Sylvaneth, but for some reason, the lesser things of life who are just very aggressive towards outsiders are the ones who naturally she associates with and doesn't see anything wrong with them, which kind of tells you about her temperament. It's like if you were really grumpy and said, I hate people, and then your friend was like, I also hate people. That's how you become friends. It's a uniting thing. I'd imagine that's what it's very much like for the Branch Witch and the Spites. Now, I know we've just gone very surface level in this video, but let's talk about why these units are cool, because they really do, like I said, set the tone for what the rest of the army is going to be like. They represent the organized fighting force of the Sylvaneth. The Noble House really is the kind of militaristic order designed that way by Alariel. We'll explore a little bit more, but when Alariel planted the first initial wave of Sylvaneth, they, most of them had various jobs. Dryads were gardeners and caretakers. The noble spirits were the defenders meant for war. Well, this is them. And this is often how they engage the narrative in books. When the Sylvaneth go to war, you'll always see these kinds of units interacting. And as I touched on before, these are some of the most important units when it comes to building the lore for your personal army. Their attitudes reflect the entire glade or grove, whatever, and it's clearly stated that their mentalities, their attributes, their attitudes have sort of a trickle-down effect on the rest of, of the Sylvaneth with them. And that's really important when you think about the fact that for hundreds of years, Alariel was a no-show. She was gone. So all the things that have affected and hurt and manipulated and forced this leadership structure, meaning like pick a tree lord ancient, all the things that have affected him personally have trickled down to everyone below him. Is he distrustful of mankind in general because he sees how easily they sway to chaos? On the flip side, has he seen good men fall and so is filled with compassion to try and do everything he can to save them? These are two opposite reactions to the same thing, but it gives you a lot of flavor to be like, how did my tree lord respond when Alario wasn't there to teach them how to do it? And how does that look when it trickles down to my entire army? And whatever aspects and attitudes are represented in that leader were the decisive reason how the Sylvaneth survived the Age of Chaos. Remember, this is how they survived. And that's going to be a very important theme I'll talk about here in a second, where... Being warlike and aggressive or reclusive or nomadic or use spells to hide and misdirect, there's lots of ways to have survived the Age of Chaos that this battle tome talks about. And each one of them can be unique to your glade. 
But now that Azalario is back and she has let loose the cry of war and basically the song has changed, now all the Sylvaneth are rising to action. That same mentality, however they survived, is now how they fight. Are they aggressive? Do they do guerrilla warfare tactics that by stepping in and out of the woods and attacking when they can? Do they attack boldly, but because they are nomadic, they just keep moving and Chaos can't pin down their location? Do they have a heavy emphasis on magic and shape and warp the battlefield as it's going on? There's again, a lot of ways the how you survived has now become how you fight under Alario's guide. In addition to that, there's a lot of personality expressed amongst the different kinds of leaders here. So it's not just that however their temperaments are trickled down, it's that how they interact with one another is also very fascinating because tree lords are considered young and impetuous, ancients are noble governors, branch witches are more aggressive and hot-headed, a little more spiteful. And if you're making a story for your army or reading it in the books, you can already see where the tension may arise with these types of people, these units. Something happens, the branch witch is ticked, the tree lord who is young and impetuous, wants to go fight, and the Ancient demands patience because his age and perspective is giving him the wisdom to know this is not a fight we can win, we need to be patient, we need to think about this. Those elements create dramatic tension. It's fascinating to think about. And when you think about the fact that their god has now come back, Alariel, and I know I know Kurnoff, people have mentioned Kurnoff before, there's not a lot about him, but primarily what we're talking about in this battle tome is Alariel. Has come back and is like, Again, directing them all towards war. What does that look like in the back of your head when you're trying to have these debates about the best way to survive, fight, and follow her command? All these things combined to make for a really great leadership structure. I love the way that they kind of separated the various types of units. Like these are the noble spirits. This is the warrior class, if you will. And next we're going to talk about the forest folk because there are some fascinating things there. So friends, that is all there is on the noble spirits. But with every video, this is the start of a discussion. I'd love to hear the lore background that you have for your army. Tell me about your tree lord, your branch witch, your ancient, or your hordes of tree revenants. Thank you all so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in tomorrow's video.